What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we are back with the OMP Hobby M4 build. So this is part two. If you haven't seen part one, go ahead and check that out. We got quite a bit done and in this video we're trying to get as much done as we can. So if you guys haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Remember, Patreon and PayPal linked in every video description if you'd like to help support me. Let's get started. Now we're gonna go ahead, grab our mainframe assembly. We're gonna grab our canopy posts and grab this piece of aluminum here. So now if you notice, it's closed on one end. It looks like a U with threads on top. So we want the back side that has threads to face our servo and we want the open side to face the boom. Okay, so this is the front of the helicopter, this is the back of the helicopter. So what we're gonna do is we are going to line this up to where these holes here line up. And then we're going to take our canopy mount and we are going to get a screw started. So we want the back of our canopy mount locked tight on our screw, get our screw through here. And then what we're doing here is we're going to get this kind of hold all this together so we can get this started so we're going to get our screw started and then we're going to pick up our mount again canopy post towards the back of the helicopter come back in two millimeter driver lock tight on our screws line everything up here so go ahead once you get this lined up these first two the other side will be super easy then you're going to go ahead tighten these all the way up and then do the exact same thing on the other side so once we are done with that, both sides will look like this. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to grab our anti-rotation bracket, countersunk side towards the boom of the helicopter, and we're going after these two holes right here. So we're gonna take our one and a half millimeter driver, Loctite on our screw, countersunk side facing us. We're gonna go ahead and tighten these screws up. There's gonna be two of them. So we're gonna get our first one snugged up and started, come back in with our second one here, go ahead and tighten that one all the way down. Now our anti-rotation bracket is completed here. So now we're gonna grab this carbon fiber plate. This plate is your fly barless mount. Now you'll notice there is a little half circle cut out here, countersunk holes. Countersunk up, half little circle towards the motor because that's going to fit into these boom block clamps and that's gonna line up and you'll notice that little circle there clears the motor. So now same exact thing, tiny little countersunk screws, one and a half millimeter driver, and you're gonna go ahead and put all four of your screws in all the way around. So now we got all four of our screws in, Loctite tightened down. We're gonna grab this carbon fiber plate with the M4 logo. So that is going to face up, countersunk holes up. It is going to drop down right here on top of that little U-shaped bracket that we put in that holds the actual anti-rotation bracket and canopy mount. So we're gonna go ahead, one and a half millimeter driver, same exact screw that we, we used on all these other little things. So go ahead and get both of those started, then come back and fully tighten them all the way up. So now we are done with our upper mount, all the carbon fiber, receiver, FBL mount, all that is done. Made the back of the mainframe very strong. So now we can move on to the skids. So we're gonna go ahead, flip our helicopter frame on its side all the way over, it doesn't matter. We have two of these aluminum brackets here. Now these are your skid mounts. So you'll notice there's a complete flat side and then there is a side with recess for your threads. So we're gonna go be going after these two in the back, these two in the front on your holes. So now I'll show you one and then you're gonna do the exact same on the other side and in the front. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna line up our holes here, two millimeter driver. And what we wanna do is get these screws started and then you'll come back and run all your screws down. So get one started, line that up come back in two millimeter driver lock tight it's the short little screws and then you're going to go through do the same exact thing in the front put all your screws in and tighten them down so now we got all of our screws in lock tighted front and rear mounts in so now we can mount the skids now pay attention your screws for the skids are two different sizes you have a 10 and a 12 millimeter screw the 12 
which is what we have on the two millimeter driver, is for the front because there's a carbon plate and these tens, the ones in my hand, are for the rear. You have this little carbon fiber plate. So we're gonna slide our screw through the plate. We're gonna take the front of our skids here, slide our screw through the skid. So now we're gonna come back, grab our actual mainframe here, get our screw started, just a couple threads, hard to see there. And then we're gonna come back with our next screw, hold this into place here, come back and get our next screw started. Two millimeter driver, Loctite on our screw, 12 millimeters long, get that guy started, and then go ahead and tighten both sides down. So both of your screws, and then you're gonna come back for the rear, no carbon fiber plate, and it's going to be 10 millimeter, and go ahead and get those two in and Loctite. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on our tail casing and assembly. So our pitch slider, which is very big and oversized, actually it's really, really big for a 380 size helicopter. Your bearings are already pre-installed, so you don't need to worry about that. Now pay attention to this right here. There's two threads on the bottom here, no threads on the top. So this is gonna be the bottom of the pitch slider. This is the top of the pitch slider. Also on your little metal U, there's a hole and a little dimple here that dimple is going to be on the bottom hole on the top so we're going to install this like this so we're going to grab our one and a half millimeter driver and one of these little tiny copper washers so we're going to drop that down so now you're going to have to kind of fish and fight this which i really wish they would have just done a like a little indent here but we can make this work so you're going to go ahead get that lined up kind of hold it into place take your screw and wiggle this whole assembly get that screw started make sure that it did not fall out and then we're going to do the same thing on this side we're going to take our little washer here and we're just going to push down slide this in so once you got both sides in go ahead tighten these screws up one and a half millimeter driver i will say that is a pain to get both of those washers in but you can see they are both there so now everything is free and smooth again hole in the top and then on the bottom and our two threads here so now what we're going to do we're going to set that assembly aside for a second you're going to grab this flat carbon fiber bracket here you're going to grab a one and a half millimeter driver and your little ball link here and we're going to go to this outside hole here and we want it to be facing this way we want it to be facing this way so curve back to us thread through here take your lock nut get that guy started and run that all the way down so now just tighten it all the way up so now that is tightened up you don't need to use any loctite or anything because it is a lock nut so now that is completely assembled so now get your screws ready on your one and a half millimeter driver we need those threads here we're going to go ahead and we are going to install this this way with our ball at the bottom get your screws started tighten them all the way up So now you'll have a completed pitch slider. It will look just like this. Now we need our tail boom and our tail belt. So now a little tip for putting your tail belt through, you can either run a wire through and pull it, or you could just take it, fold it just like this. Put a little piece of tape. I just use a little piece of painter's tape on here, fold it over. And what that does is allows the belt to slide and drop right through the boom so you can just go ahead and push it through and then keep pushing it until it comes out the other end and it comes right out so now our belt is through our boom and then you can simply just pull the painter's tape off so now we're going to take this little bracket here and if you notice it is u-shaped so we want the flat side to go to the top open side to the bottom so now we're just going to slide this in with our belt here make sure your belt is through it kind of pull it so it's straight no twists in it slide it through till our holes line up and then you can also come back with a little driver and push it up into place so now we are in driver into place here so now that we got our belt through we're going to go ahead and get our side plates on for the tail casing now pay attention on these side plates this flange bearing side, you want that flange part of the bearing to face each other. So they'll face each other like this inside the casing. So we're gonna grab the left side. This is the left side of the boom, back of the boom, left side of the casing. You're just going to simply drop that down. There's two holes there. You wanna go after those two upper holes. And now we're gonna come back, two millimeter driver, Loctite on our screw. Go ahead, 
tighten this one all the way down pretty much just to where it's almost tight where it can still move around till we get the next screw in snug it up and then we're going to come back two millimeter driver short screw there's two different size screws you have a longer and a shorter four long two short the four long go on two on each side the two short are in for the back so thread lock on our screw go ahead grab this little pen here this little standoff it's going to go in this back hole you're going to slide that through there you're going to get that screw started you're going to tighten it all the way up now you'll notice there's a little hole here. That hole is so you can put something like a T-pin, some kind of drive or something in there so you can hold that down while you tighten the screw up. So now that is done just like that. We're gonna grab our tail shaft here and we are gonna take a little bit of micro lube and put a little bit of micro lube on that shaft. So you're gonna take some of your micro lube, not that much micro lube, take some of that micro lube and you're going to just give a nice coat on your tail shaft here and then you're going to take your tail pitch slider which is already pre-assembled the manual says you don't need to disassemble it it's already assembled so now we're going to go ahead wipe off any excess micro lube and we're going to slide this whole assembly down into here Now we are going to grab these, there's two of these little side plates here. You'll notice the flat side goes towards the pulley, the indentation side goes towards the side plate. So kind of just move the boom out of the way. You will also notice there is a hole right here. That hole is for a pin. So you're gonna take your tail pulley. You'll notice that indentation goes towards that side. You're gonna slide that into there just like this. Keep the actual belt out of the way for now. Grab your tail pin here. And this little pin is gonna slide right into this hole. So just slide that through. You might need to take, you might need to take a little pair of needle nose or something to help push that pin through here. So just go ahead, get it to where it pushes all the way through. And then you're going to pull this whole assembly down so that fits perfectly into there, just like that. Take your tail belt, drop it down and over, pull it tight, take your next side, flat side towards the pulley, drop it down. It's that simple. Take your second tail casing and drop it down again flange side towards the tail assembly it's going to lock all this into place just like this so now we're going to grab our last short two millimeter screw here now we're going to grab our last two millimeter short screw little lock tight and that is going to go into this hole right here we're just going to do this until to hold everything together and we're just going to snug it down for a second you're going to notice our two holes here are lined up grab two of your longer screws now grab your tail fin your tail fin is going to slide through here just like this you have loctite on your screw it is ready to go take your screw slide it through get it started run it down until it's snug once that one's snug come back with your second screw loctite go ahead run that all the way down those are tight. You can fully lock all of your screws down now, including this back screw right here. So now that side is fully tight. Our pitch slider is on and freely moving. We're gonna come back with our last little screw here, lock tight. And then we're gonna take our pitch slider. You'll notice the indentation. There's a hole right here. That is going to drop down into here, just like this. We're gonna come back with our two millimeter screw and we're going to run that all the way down till it's tight. And we're going to lock that all the way down. And now come back and finish your front screw, just like that. Now we're gonna come back with our one and a half millimeter driver and you're going to just slide this up and put a little bit of Loctite on the threads. Just get one side started, run it all the way till it stops. And then we're going to flip our boom around here so we have something to work with. Come back with our next one and a half millimeter driver, Loctite on the threads, run that pin in until it stops. And then now our tail pitch slider assembly is completed and check and make sure it is free and smooth. So now we're going to go ahead and assemble the tail grip. So you're going to take your shims here, these little uh, rubber dampeners, dampers, and you're going to insert one into each side of the actual tail hub 
So go ahead, push that one in there just like that. And then we're gonna put a little bit of micro lube grease on them just to kind of give them a little bit of grease. Push that one into there just like that. So now we're gonna do the same thing. We got some excess grease here. We're gonna put a little bit on our tail shaft. We're gonna slide it through here, push it all the way through. And then we're going to take these little copper shims. There's two of them and pay attention to the way that the shim is. If you can see this flat side and a stepped side, flat side towards the hub, stepped side towards the actual grip. Now we're going to come back with a little bit of micro lube and put a little bit of micro lube on our shaft. So we're going to take just a little tiny bit of micro lube and just go ahead and be careful not to get it into the threads. Same on this side, a little bit of micro lube, being sure not to get them into your actual threads. Now we are going to grab our blade grip. Now the grip and the thrust bearings already come pre-installed, pre-greased. I actually pulled them apart because I couldn't believe there was grease in them and there was. So you do not need to grease those, but check just in case yours don't. So you're just going to slide it. Now pay attention, the, the side that you want up is going to be the side with the round where your screw hole is gonna fit in the head and then your lock nut fits on that side. So we're just gonna push this one. We're going to grab our next one, same thing. We're gonna look for the screw hole to go up and we're just going to slide that one together. Now we're gonna come back with our one and a half millimeter driver. You want the washer on the screw, lock tight, and then we're just gonna get this one started we're gonna come back with our second one and a half millimeter driver, lock tight on our screw and get this one started. Now we're just gonna run them down. So we're just gonna tighten them up. Both sides are tight, a little bit tight, but it does move freely. And again, we want both to face up. So now we're gonna come back. So now we're gonna come back with our ball lock tight and we are going to get this screwed onto here one and a half millimeter driver, tighten it all the way up and the exact same thing onto this side, one and a half millimeter driver, tighten it up until it stops. So now tighten. Okay. Now we are good here. We're going to come up and pay attention here on your arm. One side is flat. One side has a little mark on it. You want the flat side towards the grip, pop it into place and the same on this one, flat side towards the grip, pop it into place. Now our tail is smooth, a little tight, but smooth. So our pitch assembly is completed. We're gonna go ahead and grab our tail push rod holder and we want it, this is the right side of the boom. So we want our screw hole on the right side and we are just going to slide this all the way through here and then just slide it down for now. Not gonna worry about tightening that up. So now we are going to insert the boom into the actual mainframe and make this thing complete. So go ahead, pull your boom tight. Look down it, make sure there's no twists in the belt at all. You're going to take this and you are going to twist it one time to the left and that will give you the proper belt rotation. So now we're going to slide our belt through the boom clamps here. Go ahead, get that fitted. We want to slide it through the main pulleys little idler pulleys now pull the belt through pulling and slide the boom into the actual boom clamps slide it forward all the way till it stops now come through with the belt and get it into your pulley here might have to just kind of force it around Get that all the way forward, get it to align into this pulley mount. Rotating it to get the belt on. So now we got the belt on, we can spin our shaft and make sure that our belt is turning the right way, which it is. And we're gonna need to pull back to lock this boom down to get tension, make sure it is cleared of these pulleys. But one problem I just noticed you can't get a driver into these holes in the frame. So unless you have a regular Allen or even the thinnest driver I have will not fix. So we're gonna have to drill those two holes out to get access to those screws. 
All right, so I just used the drill bit, drilled them out. Now we can get our driver into these holes in the frame. So I really wish that OMP would have made that the right size, but is what it is. Both sides are the same. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab the boom and we're just going to pull back tension. So we're just going to pull the tension back and feel where it's at. So we're going to lock a boom bolt down. So go ahead, lock the clamp down so that way the boom can't move. Now let's go ahead and spin this, feel how this feels, feel our belt if we can reach it. So that feels pretty good right there. So now we're gonna take our second screw and we're gonna take it completely out because we need to get Loctite on these screws. So we're just gonna go ahead, take it completely out. Front one is still locked. And we're gonna put Loctite on our screw. Now that we got Loctite, we're gonna drop our screw back inside the boom clamp here. And we are going to two millimeter driver, tighten this one all the way up, lock it down, and then repeat the same process on the front boom clamp. Both screws are fully locked down, Loctited. Our belt is moving like it should. Head spins clockwise, rotor counterclockwise. So now we can move on to making up the push rod. So next thing we are going to do is the tail push rod. So for the tail push rod, you have a carbon fiber rod. You have these metal inserts here that slide. Now it is very tight actually to get these inserts to slide. So what we're going to do is we are going to epoxy these into place. So we're going to take our marker and we are going to see how much of this we need to mark, which is going to be about right here. We're going to do the same on both sides. We're going to see how much we need to mark. And that mark needs to be put right here. So now we're going to take our sandpaper on a good biting surface. We want something for the actual epoxy to stick to. And we're going to do the same on this side here. We're just going to go ahead and scuff it up. Now, once we are done scuffing everything up, a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a paper towel, go ahead and clean both sides. So once we are happy that both sides are cleaned, we're gonna get a dry paper towel and just wipe off the alcohol. Now we are ready to glue. So now we are going to mix up our 30 minute epoxy in a cup. Once we are happy with our epoxy mix, we're gonna go ahead, grab our tail push rod here. We're gonna take a little bit of epoxy on our popsicle stick and we are just going to rub it on. We don't need a lot of epoxy. This is a very tight fit onto this actual fitting here. Now we're just gonna press this all the way down, make sure we get a good bond. And then we're gonna do the exact same on the other side. Come back with your paper towel, wipe off any excess little bit of rubbing alcohol help cut the epoxy and give you a clean glue joint and then do the exact same on the other side and then you are done so go ahead let this push rod cure for a minimum of 24 hours there you guys go part two of the omp hobby m4 build so we got quite a bit done in this series. I know the video is already getting long, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut part two off here. But in part three, we will get it completely finished up, head assembly done, tail push rod on while we wait for it to dry now, wired up and ready to fly. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Remember, Patreon and PayPal are linked in the video description below if you would like to help support me. Take care and have a great day.